Hello everybody, welcome back to Tabletop Talk. Man, it's been so long. Um, Merry Christmas, by the way. Hopefully this video will be up by then. You'll see me sometimes when yes, Peter's maybe. not leaning forward. Yeah, so so we've <laughs> got... Uh, lean forward, uh, Peter. <laughs> we've been kind of reduced to a skeleton crew, I'll bet a, a pretty good skeleton crew, but a skeleton, skeleton crew, crew nonetheless. Um, but like the dead uh, avatar of a slowly slowly regrowing evil god will crawl our way back from the nexus of power. And we're, slowly, like a phoenix. we're like a we're phoenix. We're like a very weak lich. <laughs> yeah, there <laughs> you go. Who has to sit there exactly. and absorb power That's for what just I was going eons. For. Slowly and we will grow. Just, the amulet is intact, it just is drained of energy. <laughs> yeah, our phylactery's gotta reactivate here. <laughs> yeah, stick with us long enough, we'll, we'll, we'll finally get to the point yeah, where we'll we can consume there. your souls like we used to. <laughs> you didn't know that, did you? Uh... Anyway, um, so we are playing Dungeon Girl Classics. Yes! yes. I love this role-playing system because it's really, really nice to the DM. Um, and only the DM. And only the DM. <laughs> this, will be, this will be the season of pandering. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Um, so we've got, we've got Peter, we've got Nick, and we've got James Lee. Uh, they're here to play a campaign uh, set in my city of Lear, which should hopefully be entertaining. Ah, we'll see. Um, anyway, and they got three characters, so let's go ahead and figure out what's going on here. You haven't hit puberty yet. <laughs> yeah, you're, four, Wait, you're, you're playing a 14 year old? Edge you're a 14 year old boy. I'm a street boy. urgent who's a thief <laughs> in the city of Lear. Oh I've been on my own for five and a half years now since my, 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 my character fear is, feels awkward about our <laughs> age difference. It changes everything. <laughs> Wait, how old are you, Peter? Well, I was going to be like 27, but uh, yeah, I'm like, I didn't I'm, know we I'm could 28. go to 14. Well, um, it's your character. I kind of want to be 16, though. Right. What? This, this can't turn into teen adventures in the city of Lee. All right, fine. That's fine. No, That's, fine. No. That's fine. That's no, fine. We want to make just, sure that when it's Cartoon all... Network picks it up, that the appropriate <laughs> characters can play it's, us. It's the just all series. high school yeah. drama. Uh, <laughs> no, this time I'll be twice James's age, so I'll be 28. Okay. There yeah, we go. There right, you and go. then there I should go. be twice Peter's age, so I'll be... 56. <laughs> 56. You're just the oldest... Anyway, just talk, tell, tell me no, about the characters. I'm, I'm... Uh, Peter, why don't you go first? And we'll work our well, way around. Like every other time, I'm playing a wizard. Uh, frail, very pale skin. Uh, dark, greasy hail trails down his face. He does not... He's not clean as much as he should. His clothes, however, are in... Excellent condition. Nice, fancy robes to cover his frail body and his pale face. Wait, so he covers his face too? Yeah, yeah. You know. Oh, okay. Yeah. Like with a hood. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. <clears throat> and blue, his, uh... blue, blue robe, and you know, with a little bit of gold trim. So you like always have your hood up then? Yeah. <laughs> oh, okay. All wizards have their hoods up. Yeah, it, I I thing. just never pictured them that way. You learn it in what you in think first they just year. have their things down here, yeah. leaving their head totally open. Yeah. Yeah. At first year in the no, Wizards so Academy, now, they yell at you for having your I, head. Down. I always picture like, like is it wizards? Oh, oh no. That's that's how I always picture Wizards Academy because it's so much sillier. <laughs> <laughs> and my name is Merrick. That's an important thing. Mer Merrick. 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 Yeah. Merrick. As yeah. in Gordon Merrick. Well, yeah. wait. Merrick I was a wizard Merrick. named Merrick in a, in in, in a second edition. Yeah. The name. Is that the good one? name? Is that yeah, the it one is. That got name. like the instrument that could like summon evil thing. Never mind. No, no, he was a different. He was the bard in our party. Oh, uh, okay. But um, the holy keytar. Anyway, okay. Holy Merrick. keytar. Uh, do you want to give any other information, or are you just gonna kind of keep that under wraps for now? Oh or like, yeah. Like the back, like past. Um, like your whole I'll backstory. give a little bit. Not not all the details. They'll come in time. Uh, he's the son of an armor smith, but his mother died at a very young age, so his, he was the third son. The eldest son got to be the armor smith. The middle daughter was married off to a paradigm in the city of Lear, and young Merrick was only left with one option, and that was the clergy. He became a priest of Eo. <coughs> Io. Eo. 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 It's like, it's Eo, Eo, right? Eo, yeah. Never yeah. get it right. Eo. Anyways, that was not good enough for him. He soon joined a cult to the demon Ithelstep, who has five horns and a, and, a, and a spear that shoots lightning. Complete 180. Yeah. It's an easy option, you know? He, it promised him power. He was like, I've been worshipping Eo for years and I've gotten nothing. But power for almost nothing? 
gotta have it. There you go. Organized religion does that to but, a lot of people. But uh, <laughs> something happened, and he left the cult on very bad terms. Now he goes to his sister in Lear to ask for forgiveness and to start his path of redemption. Ooh, I like that. Redemption stories. Oh, okay. Uh, should let you guys know paradigm i'm gonna be defining some terms because it's a setting uh eo in my world is like the god of creator of all humans only the human race um and uh, a paradigm yeah yes <laughs> oh wait are we all we're humans? all, humans. all yeah. humans. yes uh a paradigm a paradigm <laughs> did it, in the city of the year <laughs> is uh is a ruler a uh, a higher up government official who basically is able to make laws in the city uh all right james go ahead all right, so I play Dadrio. He is the only native of the city of Lear, mostly because he's a street urchin, born here, uh, orphaned, and uncertain about his parentage, and doesn't really care. Uh, those are the kinds of questions that if you ask too much of, you die on the streets. He was raised by an old fellow. Wow. It's true. It's 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 a hard place. Who true. are my parents? It happens. You're, You're dead. dead. That's right. Yeah. You can't Hold ask on. about that this week because it's against the law. Yes. Oh yeah, the laws always change in yes. this city. The laws oh, of Lear are like. Uh, fluid. Many and yeah, if they, you wear white after Labor Day, you're a dead man. Like yep. the canals that flow through it. <laughs> you just can't care too much about that kind of thing. So, basically, I was raised by an old beggar man named mm. Garen, who apparently is mysteriously from a place or a time that seems way out of the experience of this city. He spoke a language that was unknown to anyone in the region, even by the oldest or the wisest people around. His name has a meaning that no one understands. Dadrio's name literally means like unto a daughter, mostly because apparently when this old man found him, he was kind of feminine and girlish, and he took that as kind of a mark of pride. And then when he was nine, the old man died. Uh, he came back one day from begging and found his basically stepfather, surrogate father, dead in the streets so he mourned for a moment took his dad's begging bowl and went off started stealing drew the attention of thieves guild won his way into it and has been a thief ever since of the guild and is making his own way in the world yeah um just just a moment he only mourned him for a moment you don't have more than a moment for mourning basically uh life is cheap here in the air and for those of us at the very bottom of the heap who basically have suffered under the heel of the holy war that's been going on and the wealthy people and their crystalline buildings and their pyramids of power, basically, oh, yeah. you, you don't have time for that sort of thing. I mean, he carried the body off, buried it quickly, but, you know, you have to worry about your next meal. There isn't really time for How do you carry out. a body when you're 14? <laughs> hey! <laughs> In the streets of Lear, by the time you're Wait, what's, nine... what's your strength? Mm -hmm. Ten. <clears throat> yeah. you know, average strength for a 14-year-old. Yeah. Now, was that an imperial moment or a metric moment? That was an imperial moment. Imperial moment. Right. Because so my father very... raised me in the ancient traditions. None of this, like, newfangled metrics so... and E to the something powers <laughs> and stuff like it that. Was a, it was a very short moment. Yes. I'm um... a boy of the streets. I do the old ways. Feet, inches, ounces. You're I like... don't care if our billion dollar satellites go <laughs> flying off in the stars and stuff like that. Live in the, live in the now. Those yes. don't exist, by the way. Any rumors about the satellites you may have heard, don't listen to them. Lear has no satellites. It doesn't happen. Anyway, uh, let's move on to Nick. All right. My character's name is Joven, and he's a cleric. Um, he is a cleric of Netro, the god of... Uh, vi like true sight and vision, which is both like like both both knowledge like like philosophical vision and and literal vision. So originally in his hometown, he was. <laughs> <laughs> Nick has a. Page I can just I can just read. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Wrap in, folks. Hmm. Well, I mean, like, like I. Are our characters gonna tell themselves, or, or like just? It's in, up to you. You, you can either tell us something uh, now, or it can come up during there gameplay. There are they some details I don't want to share. Wait, yeah, Merrick. You want to keep those completely separate from our characters? 
Yeah, if like, the, like if the characters, to our characters, if the characters probably shouldn't know it for story purposes, then I mean, leave it out. It's not I, something. I mean, that's uh, that's fine. I just thought you omitted those because you wanted to tell our characters. <coughs> like mm, they might find out. Okay. They might. Well, anyway, um, since I actually like rolled my starting occupation like you're supposed to do in DCC, even though apparently we could have picked, I I <laughs> I landed on barber. So as a barber in his hometown, he had a knack for, in casual conversation, seeing straight to the heart of his customers' problems, as is, <laughs> as is yep. the case for many, many local barbers. Uh, they're, they're so insightful. I wish I had that. So, <laughs> it's so much so that when a patron passing through recommended that he, he seek out the Church of Netro, and the town folk were sad to see him leave because he finally, he finally decided to head out. And, and see if there was more to the world than giving people awesome haircuts. And, <laughs> and <laughs> the townspeople were like, oh, This is going to make him. You solve life. all of our problems, don't go. And he's like, I have to go. You <laughs> solve all of our problems. <laughs> There's goblins in the mine. I'll give you I know haircuts. exactly what to do. Uh, no, they're no. Angry he, they have he, bad cuts, he cuts their hair and is like, Oh, well, for goblins, shouldn't you just use like smoke, smoke them out if they're in the mountain? And they're like, why or, didn't we think of that? Or, oh, I see. So he had so, like he had like he, he wise has, like, insights. Yeah, just okay. insight. He's like a wise monk who came. Okay, all right, yeah. Well, you. he just like it just seems really easy to him. Yeah. So so anyway, he goes off and studies with with uh, with the church, and then after like five years or so, they're like, we need to send you on a mission, and so or we think it's finally time to send you on a mission, and so darkness is is surrounding the city of Lear, or darkness is in, like, se like secrecy, and it must be brought into the light. <laughs> no, no, it doesn't. <laughs> to, be, uh, to be seen and judged. Well, how do you say your god's name one more time? Netro. N-E-T-R-O. -E I'm surprised Netro. that you did not get a calling from your god saying, you must go there and settle a city. No, it's more like, it's more like... <laughs> I think they're probably done with that. That's, there's been it's four more people. like it's more like so much is gathered there that that there is like you know unrest and mm -hmm. yeah. there are, there oh, are yeah. definitely like there's more the the city is has more problems than the than the followers are, are letting solutions. letting, letting yeah. its citizens know. oh yeah definitely uh, maybe I mean perhaps followers are pretty deeper, good guys, I deeper think. machinations uh, I really wish that you had some special ability to wield a pair of scissors like a kuna. Well, I mean, I have a pair of scissors <laughs> and I should probably just... give you get well, like scissors act as a dagger. Yeah, they do. Ooh. Yeah, they do 1d4. 1d4, I don't know, yeah. write that down. Uh, yeah. I'll put that in weapons. <laughs> so, um, for those of you who know what DCC One. is, so we've gone around and introduced the character. For, you, for those of you who know what DCC is and how the system works, we're skipping the funnel. Um, because frankly, we really wanted to create characters to make the story a bit more meaningful. We've done a funnel before and I think it's a great system. I, I I'm, not, I'm not sure if everybody agrees with me on that. Um, I love the funnel. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Yeah, yeah. James, James doesn't like the funnel. I mean, um, it was fun for what did, but I liked making a character from scratch. Like, I mean, it's just very. Really... I work in the game design industry, so I have huge biases about all kinds of stuff like this. <laughs> right. <laughs> Be prepared to hear biases. <laughs> yes. Um, but uh, we're, so we're skipping the funnel for that purpose. But we have done it before, so don't think we're not like hardcore. Pretty hardcore. We okay. Pretty so, hardcore. Uh, <laughs> he's hardcore. Yeah. Yeah, I'm hardcore. No, we're not hardcore. I drink Starbucks. I'm really relaxed. Nope. Okay, so uh, the city of Lear. You guys have been here, at least you two, because you're a native. You two have been here for like about a couple of weeks. You've gotten your bearings. Mm -hmm. You're figuring mm -hmm. things out. I don't know if you've quite been to see your sister yet. I don't think you have. I'm um, scared. You're scared. I'm trying to figure out how I should approach it. Good. So you're, so you're working up the courage. To do so, I'm assuming. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah, um, you're. Okay. Or, oh, because you joined a cult and they hate you. Well, also, oh, also, wow. his sister is um, the, the the wife, the wife of, of a, Yeah, of a higher up in their government. Yeah, yeah. Uh, basically and, one of the guys who can make those crazy laws. Yeah, right. and, yeah. Uh, you didn't explain the government system earlier. Do you want to do that? Yeah, I think we'll just. Well, um, so so basically. Well, or or the whole 
background to Lear. Lear is a city that was founded because three different religions all got messages from their gods saying, you need to go to this place and do a specific task. Some of them said, you need to found a city here and or like claim it for your own. Others were, we need to search for this special item. Um, still others were, there's, there's something more to be, there's something more hidden here that you need to uncover. And then there was a fourth religion known as the followers of Parallax, Parallax being the name of the god, who moved in uh, from across the sea, and basically their vision from their god was to, they knew that those three religions were there, and their job was to unite the three religions and build a city as like a holy place to Parallax upon that coastal shore. Uh, Lear is a coastal city. It it's runs Its commerce and stuff runs mostly off of canals. Uh, and, you know, ships and trade and such like that. And it runs right along the Crystal Cove in my world. Um, so the followers succeeded in that. They succeeded in diplomatizing the three religions, bringing them together a, a little bit um, through using various uh, kind of underhanded machination, machinations. Machinations? This is going to be just like the brazier thing. And, uh, and, other, and other things. Um, and eventually got, got it to the point where they brought in more settlers who didn't belong to the religions and managed to work it out where they could build the city together. So they built Lear on this principle, but the three religions are still there. And they're still pretty mad at each other. So there's a whole bunch of chaos and infighting that goes on. Um, but the followers basically rule the city. And the whole thing with Parallax is that the followers of Parallax believe that the, lo the laws and rules of Parallax are God are absolute. The problem is, is those can change. Those can shift. So they have a uh, leader called the Grand Paradigm, who that's his title, who basically uh, says every now and then, these are the laws for this week. There's a couple of tenets for Lear that don't change no matter what. It's basically don't harm anybody um, no matter what. Uh, don't steal or you know take anything from anybody else. Um, Fascists! Yeah. <laughs> any, of these, any of these laws can be changed and modified by a paradigm, and any law made by a paradigm must be obeyed. Um, so... Travelers to the city have been locked up in prison for wearing mismatching socks. It happens. Uh, it, it, so it's a, it's a dangerous place to be, and it, it puts kind of the whole city in a state of subtle paranoia. Uh, but it's better than being out in the wilderness because the followers can protect you there. There, anyway. Uh, so are the laws clearly announced? Yes, yes. That is one thing. They don't. They. It's not they secretive. Okay. They don't. They do make sure it's it's known to everybody. And um, hmm. and some weeks there aren't any new laws, but it. it it happens sporadically, right? There doesn't seem to be any real rhyme or reason to it. Do now how? Uh, the reason do, this do... happens, by the way, is because the followers of Parallax believe that there is a grand like uh, design, and to achieve that design, to achieve the final end of that belief, they need to follow these very specific rules laid out by their god. So they absolutely insist that these rules are necessary. Uh, anyway, go ahead. What were you gonna say, Nick? Or... Oh, um, do the. Do the commoners or the, the citizens of the city, do they know why the laws are being made? They, or is there is there any sort of justification? Or is it like... It's Parallax's decree. Why on, why on earth would you question our God's decree? Does does the average citizen know <laughs> how they determine Parallax's decree? Well, the we, we don't know how they do it, but those of us who live in the we say, know that... Well, the, no, no, we don't know what methodology they oh, use, like yes. the casting of law. We don't okay, know how so, they do so it. So we but don't know we how do. they come, or nobody knows how they come but up with it. But they just kind of like come story. out and they're like, Paradox has spoken. Yeah, like yeah, that like, story about how yeah. this is what their God decrees in order to bring about the right ending. Uh -huh. We all know that. The, yeah. the, the, mm -hmm. the followers basically make sure everybody understands this because they want everyone to follow their, their path. And to understand that if you break this rule, you are literally trying to unravel the universe. So they want us to know that. Yeah, okay. How they get um, Parallax to talk to them, that's a big secret. We don't okay, know. Um, there, well, there is, the Grand Paradigm is known as being an avatar of their, of their god. Or he oh, sees the, that. The, right. Yeah, the, the, the one leader, right? He, he's like the yeah, top He's like the leader. top guy. Is my sister married <laughs> to the Grand Paradigm? No. no okay, just a oh, paradigm. good. No. That was uh, the A Paradigm. I'm guessing like the Grand Paradigm spends like all day in meditation and like all sorts of other stuff. Nobody's ever seen the Grand Paradigm, mm -hmm. so it's kind of a... Question of ever? Yeah, no, nobody's ever seen him ever. I could be the Grand Paradigm then. Uh, well, <laughs> you can aspire you can to be the Grand to be Paradigm. It, certainly, if you want to be crazy, that would get you thrown in prison right quick. All the oh, paradigms oh, claim yes. they've seen the Grand Paradigm. Of course, oh yes. So oh, okay. it's like the, it's basically um, the commoners and people outside yes. of the religion it's like, have never seen it. It's him. like Big yeah. Brother. But the people who are the paradigms know who the Grand Paradigm, or at least they claim that they know who it is. That's an important distinction. That, that Grand Paradigm is one of the paradigms from what they tell us, 
but no one knows if any of them is truly actually the Grand Paradigm. Well, wait. Oh, so, so the Grand Paradigm could be one of the. It could indeed. Right. In fact, that's what everyone know. believes. Okay. Like people who actually believe they're not lying believe that one of the paradigm is the Grand Paradigm, but they keep it a secret, like mostly to protect his his safety. But other than that. There are those who basically believe there is no grand paradigm, and they're just lying to us. Yeah, um, okay. I believe that. How many how many paradigms are there? Uh, there are six paradigms in the city. There are only six, six. paradigms. Mm -hmm. Wow, six paradigms. I thought we were gonna say like lawsuits. fifty or something. No. <coughs> um, that would be okay. super confusing. Yeah, that would be like, insane. Do the, do the people of Lear like? Do they like their government? <laughs> no, it's it's it creates a thing of paranoia. So the only reason people of Lear like their government is because it keeps the three religions in check, mm -hmm. and because it religion. makes the city of Lear much much safer to live in than any of the surrounding lands. There's clearly mm -hmm. a faction well, of people true. who think that the now the much fewer number of suicide bombers is much much better for the city. Whereas there are those of us who basically have said, you know, it's no better. In fact, things right. are worse for us now because we're under oppression. There's more disparity of the wealthy versus the poor. There's more people being dragged off the streets for no reason and stuff like that. Well, yeah, Back I mean, when we I had mean, suicide like, bombers, like, at least we knew what to expect. Yeah, it's like... Because <laughs> we, we, we didn't know when to expect it. We didn't know when to expect it. But oh, it's yeah. not... I mean, it's peace, but... But at a great cost. Yeah. At a cost. Well, there is still personal freedom, though. In, in, to some degree. Right. It's I mean, not like that's what they tell that. us. But those um, of us who have been on the other okay, end of mention, that mention the ones. the magic metal. Yeah, and also, um, so one of the reasons, the most of the main reason the followers are so good and able to control these three religions and keep everybody in check is because they have sentient metal, which is basically um, a special kind of odd-looking metal that can be pounded out into any kind of shape or form, a flat disc, an orb, a sword, a um, rifle-looking thing, something else along those lines. That, oh no! That is, just, oh no! That is that is sentient oh, and has and can have commands applied to it. So basically, some of the followers literally have like floating metal discs that they just command. Your job is to bring people up and down, and then that's what they do. Or like like guardsmen of the city fly around on metal discs. Static there's shock. little tiny metal orbs that can. The, oh, I forgot to mention the metal can also uh, cast spells. So there's little tiny metal orbs that can like <laughs> float around and like look at things and view people and spy on things for the gov for the government oh, okay. and stuff like that. Um, um, are, okay, when when people are like. If there's someone going crazy, are there going to be, like, little orbs that fly out and, like, zap them? Oh, there could with, be, with yes. Things? If the guards can't mm. get there in time. Do they, yeah. ever, do they ever okay. yell at pieces of metal saying, get a job, <laughs> it's because what? they're not doing anything? What, what are y'all no. bent out of shape for? So, so the real question is, is the sentient metal literally sentient? It's sentient. It, it's essentially a construct. So it feels pain. Yes. It can feel oh, insulted what? and it's oh, enough it's of like, them get together and have a meeting they can decide to wipe not, out the fleshies but it, and take but it, over but it follows a, yes but it follows a, but they all follow a very specific code of commands and for you, now well and if you and if you break the code of commands you can sure shut them down as well it's like the whole thing where like oh there's a golem guarding the wizard's tower but the golem only understands certain syntax if you screw with the syntax the golem shuts down until enough so, of them get together and build so a golem so you have to own. like break in you have to hack into the golem's code and like mess so, up the so code. learn the syntax we could change what this metal does <laughs> yes Ooh. and it's assumed that there are that there must be uh, it's like some some wizards and stuff and there's hints going around the year that there must be some sort of central control system to keep mm. all the metal in check or keep it working. Mm. So somewhere behind the scenes, there's a secret cabal of coders who work on the sentient metal. Now, who? when, um... Coders. Now, I don't my... Know what those are. They're people who code. Oh, oh, code. Oh, co oh I'm coders, sorry. Yeah. I thought that was some kind of mythical being. I was like, what is this coder? Yeah. Just just to be clear, um, the armor the from my coder? wardrobe, that's... Like, they're not similar metals at no, all, right? No. Okay, good. Just wanted to just wanted to be clear. When that be great? The armor shows up one day. Not today, sir. Sorry, <laughs> I quit. I'm washing my hair. <laughs> yeah. Wash. You don't have hair. 